Hello everyone, I am Elena de la Vieja, Commercialization Director at Equitboys. I'm very happy to participate in the IDA Talks. Today, I will be sharing with you information on a completely new and exciting technology which the Norwegian company Waterize brings to the desalination market. I'm talking about subsea desalination. Subsea desalination, when first heard, it sounds complex and even one might say kind of incredible. However, subsea technology has been developed over the last 20 years in Norway for the oil and gas industry. And so the production of drinking water by desalinating seawater in deep seas uses this know-how and incorporates the latest technological advances from the deep sea oil industry. Now, we focus on desalination, there are different technologies that have evolved, matured, electrodialysis, therm, and so on. However, now and for more than 10 years, the vast majority of desalination plants in the world use reverse osmosis membrane technologies. Waterize puts together commercially available larval membranes and the physical principle of osmotic pressure, which in the ocean is equal to the hydrostatic pressure to water depth of 280 meters. And so by putting together a proven technology of both the subsea oil and gas and the aero desalination markets, subsea desalination is possible. Allow me to share a little more detail on the technology itself. Subsea desalination systems consist of submarine desalination modules installed at approximately 400 meters depth. So what do we find at 400 meters? There's two very important things. The very high quality inlet water, 90% of marine life is found in the first 200 meters of the ocean, directly connected to sunlight, and the water ice plant will be located at twice that depth. And we also find hydrostatic pressure, which I already mentioned, and which is enough to drive all of the pre-membrane pressure requirements. If we think about operating, Subsea diesel plants incorporate unique features that come from deep sea oil installations. They're modular, they're extremely reliable with design based on simplicity, and they count with unmanned plant operation, with all operations being fully automated and remotely controlled from land. So these submarine desalination modules, which are located at um, 400 meters depth, they're connected to land by two types of connections an umbilical cable which provides both energy and communications and also by a pipeline for the transport of permit water to land. And so the main advantages of the subsea desalination are um, same reliability as a conventional plant. The hydrostatic pressure of the water column provides free energy applied to water going into the membranes. Water ice will only need to pump the permit to shore. The result of this is the reduction of the total energy consumption of the plant by approximately 40%. I mentioned earlier the high quality water found at depth in the ocean. This means that there is no need for intensive pretreatment. Subsea plants also take up to 80% less coastal terrain, so the reduction in the land needs is very, very high. This is very really useful in new plants and also for existing plants that need an increase in their capacity, there is no space available. So all in all, subsea desalination brings a lower environmental impact, reduced impact of brine discharge, limited marine life at deep waters, the elimination of chemical waste produced in a pretreatment, and of course, the reduction of CO2 emissions. Anyway, Time is up for this talk. Um, I hope you have enjoyed hearing this short intro on this very interesting technology. Thank you everybody for listening and I hope to see you very, very soon in the next IDA conference.